Hey, Professor. What up? What's up, teacher? Welcome to class. Hey. Hey, Good Professor. Hey. How's your weekend? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. It's all right. Yeah. I had some work. Exciting. I was working all weekend. Oh, that's busy. I went to the beach. Well, today we're going to learn about the top five human resource trends. Okay. You guys ready to start? Yeah. Yeah. The first one we're going to learn about is the candidate experience. Reports show that 83% of candidates say negative interview experience can change their mind about a role or company they once liked, while 87% of talent say a positive interview experience can change their mind about a role or company they once doubted. There are numerous factors that go into this interview process that contribute to a positive candidate experience, such as clear job descriptions, short hiring cycles, interview feedback, and regular follow-ups from the employees. Does anyone have a great example of a candidate experience that went well in an interview? Yeah, I have one. Corey. <clears throat> so this past summer I did an internship, well, at a Broadspire, which is a Crawford company at the Tampa Business Park by the Buck Stadium. So it ended up being a good candidate experience. I went to the interview, kind of not caring about the job. It was like a workers' comp job, which didn't sound that fun to me. But I went and talked to the manager and she was really energetic, upbeat. Told me about how like fun the job is, how they have like parks like free food every week, they have a gym that was free, weekly games, just like all around fun things with the team. And the atmosphere in the building itself, I could tell, was really upbeat, and everyone loved their job. So I ended up taking the job, and it was a great summer. So the employees' atmosphere really made you want that job? Yeah, I could just tell it was a fun environment, and I ended up having a good good summer there. Awesome. Well, our next one is the remote work model. From 2005 to 2012, the number of Americans who worked remotely grew by almost 80%. That number is expected to climb higher by 2020. Companies are embracing the idea of acquiring the right talent, right people, and required skill sets. The fact that employees sit at a desk from 9 to 5 under an office roof is unexpe unexplainable. Several tools are used to help teams collaborate and stay connected in the upcoming years. The focus on human resource tools helping remote workers from becoming more creative and connective and productive will increase continuously. Does anyone have a great example of a remote work model? Devin. All right, so as the um, majority of the people in the class understand, we are full-time students. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get an internship with uh, TD Bank working in their uh, financial analysis program. But the big thing for them is that it's a 40 minute commute and I also have to take classes every day. So I couldn't really find the time, so I brought up the, um, like the topic of possibly commuting to work, and they were all for it, because one, I would save 40 minutes there and back from work, so that's approximately like almost two hours, hour and 20 minutes, whatever you wanna say. And then along with that, um, I needed, um, like it allowed me to study for my classes while working alongside with my job. And also overall kind of just saves time management along with giving me more time to be productive, being comfortable in my own work environment and overall just giving me a great experience. That's so great they let you work from home. Our next one is learning and skill development. Is everyone taking notes? Yes, ma'am. Yes. In a national survey of over 400 employees spanning over three generations, 70% of the respondents indicated that job-related training and development opportunities influenced their decision to stay at their job. Companies that offer comprehensive training programs get the most significant benefits accelerate professional growth and skill development to build a highly motivated workforce. Ongoing learning has given a competitive edge and remains to be the most promising benefit from employees' perspective. 
Has anyone ever gone through a job-related training and development program that influenced their workplace? Will? Uh, so, actually, this, this summer, I got hired as a waiter, but um, before they let me take tables by myself, I had to go through a training program. It was a uh, seven-shift program, so it took about a week and a half, because I worked about five, probably about five days a week. Um, so the training consisted of tasting food, learning the ingredients down to the portions, like each thing in the menu. Uh, we had to learn the happy hours, other deals, when we have trivia night, um, half price wine Wednesday. We did all this extra stuff. We had to learn about the culture, the values, other locations. We just had to get the whole atmosphere because they really think that the more that you train and you kind of know about what you're doing, the better it looks for everyone. And you get the whole feeling the customers really experience like a unique, unique experience every time. And you need to get a 78 on the test after your seventh training shift to be able to take your own tables. Otherwise, you had to continue training. I actually got a 72 my first time, which I thought was pretty good, but they were like, no, nah, you need a 78. <laughs> I had to take the test again. It was a 100-question test. It took me almost an hour and a half. It was literally probably one of the hardest tests I've ever had. And it was at a restaurant, but second time I passed it, and I still work there. Ooh, good job, Will. Good job. That leads right into our next one, which is workplace culture. <clears throat> a Forbes study found that companies with strong culture see a four times increase in revenue growth. A happy technological advance and progressive work culture is all you need to retain and bind people in the organization. There's a growing need to cultivate strong work relationships, reward employees, develop an environment of continuous learning and growth, and encourage an open door policy, ownership of work, and freedom of speech. Has anybody ever experienced a great workplace culture that they'd like to share with us? Corey, yeah. thanks for volunteering. No problem. So recently I worked with this company called Soccer Shots, which is a company all over the US, mostly the East Coast, but in Tampa, the area. We work with local schools to teach kids like soccer and values. Um, it's a kind of a good family atmosphere. Just from the interview alone, I was it made me make a funny sound, a funny face. So it's really a fun interview. I can tell it's been a good job. And every Saturday we have long like day sessions in the morning from eight to one, and it's like a fun. There's free food, games. Everyone's kind of just messing around. It's like kind of feels like summer camp in a way. It's a good like morale. We even have team boost bowling every month, every first of the month. So that's really fun. And overall, it just feels like a family. You're just going and hanging out, having fun, playing soccer with kids every day. Do you think that was just because there were kids at your work, or was it between the employees as well? It was employees. I even told them when I got the job that I'm a kid at heart, and just in an older body, so I just kind of felt like one of the kids. Sounds like a great environment. Yeah. Our last one before class is over is highlight performers. profiles of top performers that are made visible throughout the company, on display boards, on the internet, and especially social media will encourage others to put their best foot forward, thereby creating a competitive environment within the com company and helping others to exceed. Has anyone ever been considered a top performer in their company? You have? Yes, I have. Let's hear it, Devin. So I had an internship at Enterprise. And one of the big things that they focus on is sales. So they have a board for weekly sales, monthly sales, and yearly sales. And then you basically get some incentivized bonus off of it. So every monthly sale, if you're at the top, you get a free lunch or free dinner bought from you for the company. Um, for monthly, you basically get to take a car for a week on your own to just whatever you want, but that's only if you're the top performing um, salesman. And then for yearly, they actually will pay for your one week vacation. They will give you a trip to anywhere you'd like. And this really boosts not only yourself, but everybody in your team and on, in your same branch. Uh, gives them motivation and energy to try and be the top salesperson. And you don't necessarily get upset when your partner or like your friend gets a better sales position than you. 
uh, or from or above you, I guess you can say, it kind of just motivates you a little bit more for next month or next year to strive to be a little bit better, make an extra phone call, try and upgrade a little bit of a sale. But overall, um, kind of just being acknowledged from your good work makes you feel good and definitely motivates employees. Great job. We're proud of you for getting that. Thank you. Board. I appreciate yeah. it.